Hi, it's Susan. I thought I would try something a little different today and we would take a morning walk out in the garden and look at a few things that are out here. This is where I get a lot of my inspiration for my art and I just kind of wanted to walk around and talk about it a little bit. This is um, coyote brush, which is one of our native plants that is just awesome for our pollinators and it's just about done flowering now. Later on when the sun comes out, we'll probably still have some little critters on it. But it's a great dye plant. I use this, uh, it gives me kind of like a yellow tinge to my papers when I use it. And the wood is really nice when it dries. I can use it in, um, you know, the sticks and the twigs. I can use those in other projects as well. And I guess where my inspiration comes from out here is the idea of creating something from nothing. When we bought this property five years ago, there was nothing literally out here. Well, there was this oak tree, which really called to me, but it was hidden because right in front of this oak tree, there was this big old metal, um, you know, it's like an old hay barn, but it wasn't used for hay. They stored their RVs and stuff out there. And then all of this was not here five years ago. None of this was here. This was actually a full-size batting cage that they had because their son was very much into baseball and he was practicing. So there was, there, there were no plants. There was that one tree in the back. I'm walking here with a new selfie stick, so hopefully it's not quite too crazy. And there were those two oak trees, plus there was one more that we lost in a storm. And that was it. N none of these things were here. None of these plants were here. And so we knew we wanted to create a garden for wildlife. I had not gotten into eco printing yet, or doing anything with natural dyes, and I really wasn't doing art with natural materials. Building the garden was really all about getting back to nature. And I can't even tell you really how, I don't know, how it was that I got inspired to do anything like this. This is our native fuchsia, and here it is. It is late November here in California, and when the sun comes up, those flowers are going to open up, and the hummingbirds are going to be all over it. But my husband was an environmental science major, and he went to college over here in uh, the Santa Cruz area. And we talked about, at our old house, we talked about plants in the garden and kind of stuff. And he said, well, let's just explore some native plants. And his parents had some native plants in their yard. And we, you know, we started doing a little bit of research and how good it was for the environment and bringing the pollinators back to the yard. And I just kind of fell in love with the idea that we, we could do something with nothing. Just like with art, we could create art from nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean, okay, these wood chips here, these wood chips are what made something from nothing to start with. Because the ground was so hard, it was so compacted from the batting cage and from them driving their RV and driving their motorcycles around the property, that the water just sat on top of the ground. And this whole area back here the first year was an absolute moat. I mean, there were just a couple inches of standing water all winter long. And so we did not till the ground. We did not tear it up. We did not break it in order to build. What we did is we got wood chips and we piled them about six inches up. And then we just let mother nature do the work. And by that, I mean that under the ground, all these things that are happening when we don't realize it, underground all the micro herds all the little tiny creatures with long names that I can never pronounce and the worms oh my goodness the worms they do the work they are digging through that really hard compacted soil and coming up to the wood chips to find the nutrients in them and as they dig there are these tunnels and things that are happening underground all these things you can't see what's happening underground but they're digging these tunnels and in the process of digging these tunnels to come up to get the nutrients they are allowing the soil to open up so that hard compacted soil isn't so hard and compacted anymore and the water then can infiltrate down below to the next layer and by doing that then the worms can come up farther and then the worms poop and their frass and all the other micro herds that die in there they they decompose and all that stuff starts to build up so then when we got ready to plant things suddenly there were nutrients in the soil and we were able to feed the plants we were able to 
grow. We were able to do stuff and all because of these things that were happening underground. And I think, I think that that is something that happens with our art. We, we look at the blank page, whether it's a journal or a canvas or an art journal book, we're gonna sketch and we're going in and out of the dark and the light. Sorry about that, but I didn't grab a light to bring out here. This is, this is all a new kind of filming, but I think what happens when we create and we look at that blank page and we think, ah, oh, I have no idea what to do with it. It's a blank page. It's absolutely terrifying. What do I want to do? And that's kind of what I felt like when I was looking at this yard. It was a blank page. There was nothing but hard compacted soil, not even any weeds. That's how dead it was. There were no dead. No worms in the ground, there were no weeds, there was nothing growing. But I looked at that blank page and I thought about the kind of art that really inspired me. You know, if you go to Pinterest and you look through things, you go to Instagram and you look at things and you get inspired. And then I thought about how we wanted to bring the pollinators back. And, and that's where the idea started to happen. And the garden has evolved based on what the pollinators have told us, what the birds have told us, what the critters in the garden have told us about what they wanted. And I think our art is going to do that too. It's going to tell us what it wants to be. And we start off with that scary blank page, but there's all this stuff happening in our subconscious. There's all this other stuff happening that we can't see underground, but it's the sum total of our entire lives. That's what we're bringing to our art. You know, I. I bring the pain of growing up without a dad. I thought that, that was pain. Maybe it wasn't so painful now that I know more about him. But, you know, I bring that pain to my art. You don't see me making art about painful things, but the emotions of that pain, it's in my art. And I think we bring that to the garden because I think about how there was nothing and then there was something. I bring the pain of being an only child. I bring the joy of being a mother. I bring the joy of being in the garden to my art. Our art is the sum total of all the things we have ever done in our lives. All the scary things, all the brave things, all the creative things, all the happy things, all the sad things. We bring it all to the table. And then we go out and we create something out of absolutely nothing. And isn't that the most magical experience we could ever have in our entire lives? Something out of nothing. Go create something out of nothing. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.